All right, welcome. Advanced level chemistry, this is part one, take two. Okay, um, we had a little technical difficulties actually during class, but um, so I wanna go over one through seven. Part two of the video will cover eight, and what we did in class, that one came out, but it'll cover eight through 17. But I wanna go through one through seven very quickly, especially number seven, it's, it's very important. So what is the definition of chemistry? Obviously, you can just look at that, look it up. It's, it's the study of the composition of matter and the changes that matter undergoes. In other words, the chemical reactions. So what's a substance made up of and how does it react, okay? As far as the five branches of chemistry, it's really not gonna be important for you to know. We're gonna do inorganic in here. The, the second one is organic chemistry, and organic chemistry is really the study of carbon compounds that you all living things on earth are carbon-based substances so uh, organic chemistry is the study of that then you have biochemistry analytical chemistry and physical chemistry but um, really don't spend a whole lot of time worrying about that now the three classes of matter we have three different classes of matter and if you look in your in your notes and in your textbook you can see the breakdown of matter looks like this, okay? Matter is either heterogeneous or homogeneous. Hetero obviously meaning different parts with different properties. If it has different parts with different properties, it's obviously a mixture. But matter can also be homogeneous. Homogeneous can be a mixture, which we call a solution. And you should also know that we have colloids and suspensions over here as far as your heterogeneous mixture. So we need to know the three types of mixtures, okay? But if it's not a mixture, homogeneous, then it's gonna be a pure substance, and pure substances are either elements or compounds. You can have pure gold, pure silver, pure aluminum, pure sodium, pure oxygen. Any element is pure, but compounds are also pure. Water is composed of hydrogen and oxygen, but they're chemically combined and water has its own unique set of properties. Therefore, you have pure water, pure sugar, pure carbon dioxide, okay? Compounds are also pure because they have their own unique set of properties. So our three classes of matter end up being elements, compounds, and mixtures. Everything in, in the, on the earth is either gonna be an element, it's gonna be a compound, or it's gonna be a mixture of those two things, okay? So, three classes of matter, elements, compounds, and mixtures. Now, you can do it, come on computer. The three classes of elements are metals, nonmetals, and metalloids, okay? Now, we're gonna skip over, the, we'll come back to this one, and we're gonna go, what are the properties of metals? Well, we know that metals have a luster, which is a fancy word for meaning they have, they're shiny, okay? They're good conductors of heat and electricity. They reflect heat and light. They're malleable, and you should know the definition of malleable, it means it can be pounded into thin sheets. They're ductile, which means it can be drawn into wire, okay? Um, generally gonna be solids at room temperature. The only one metal that's a liquid at room temperature is mercury, okay? Then you have nonmetals. It's going to be exactly the opposite. They don't have a luster. They're dull. Okay. They're poor conductors of heat and electricity. We call them insulators. Okay. They don't reflect heat and light. They're brittle. Okay. And in, in class today we talked about there's a difference between brittle and fragile. Brittle simply means opposite of malleable. That when you hit it, it's going to break into smaller pieces. It's not going to be pounded into thin sheets. Fragile means it breaks easily. A diamond is the hardest natural known substance, yet it's brittle. If you hit a diamond hard enough, it will shatter into smaller pieces, okay? But it is definitely not fragile, okay? So brittle and fragile sometimes think they're synonymous and they're really not. So, but uh, nonmetals are brittle, okay? They can be solids, liquids, or gases for nonmetals. And then obviously those that are right along the zigzag line are your metalloids. So where are they located on the periodic table? Everything to the left is going to be a metal. Everything to the right 
is going to be a non-metal. These down here fit in here, so these are metals as well. All along the zigzag line are your metalloids, except for aluminum. Everybody knows aluminum's a metal, okay? So you know that, so it's not a metalloid, but boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, and polonium are all your metalloids. Properties of both, kind of hard to classify, okay? So, we now know number five. So number four, now there is a typo in number four. It say, should say, what is the smallest part of an element that can maintain the properties of that element? And that is gonna be the atom. And then the smallest part of the compound that can maintain the properties of that compound is a molecule, all right? So, number six. I highly, highly, highly recommend you know number six, okay? The three differences between a compound, oh, pardon me, not, that's the wrong one. Know the differences between physical, you need to know this one too, physical and chemical properties. Physical properties are just properties that you can determine without changing the identity. Chemical properties, in determining them, you change the composition of the substance. So, physical properties are color, density, boiling point, melting point, anything you can determine about a substance without changing its identity. Chemical properties describe the chemical reactions that a substance undergoes. And so, does it burn? Is it flammable? Does it react with acid? What other chemicals does it react with? Those are chemical properties, okay? Now let me move the screen up for just a second. Just a minute, you just a minute. Yeah. So, you will have several of these in the multiple choice. There's 34 multiple choice questions on the test and three free response questions, okay? Number seven, okay, label each of the following as a physical change or a chemical change or a nuclear change. Now again, remember, in a nuclear change, the composition of the substance is actually changed. So in a nuclear change, when carbon-14 undergoes radioactive decay, it actually is converted into nitrogen. So the actual identity of the substance is changed. This does not happen in an ordinary chemical reaction. This involves radioactivity. So, as a result, uh, you're not gonna go out, hopefully you're not gonna go out and see any nuclear changes taking place in your backyard. If you did, it's a very bad day. So, ice melting. Well, when ice melts and becomes water, it's still H2O, you didn't change its composition, so that's a physical change. Sugar, dissolving in water. Sugar, where well, you can evaporate the water off, and so as a result, that is a physical change. Iron metal rusting. Now the iron is shiny and malleable, but rust is, is, is um, reddish brown, it's brittle, okay, it's fragile, it, it, so it's a completely new substance, so that's a chemical change. Tearing paper, it's still paper, so that's physical. Zinc and acid producing bubbles, gas, that's evidence of a chemical change taking place. Water evaporating, when water turns to steam, it's still H2O. So that's gonna be a physical change. Dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide, subliming, meaning going straight to a gas, CO2 gas. Again, it's still CO2, therefore it's a physical change. And lastly, paper slowly turning yellow over time. And I showed, this is my old lab notebook from years ago, okay? And when you look at it, it's all yellowed. It almost looks like it's been in a fire, okay? because it's actually slowly, slowly, slowly burning. It's combining with oxygen. So where it's closed, the outer edges exposed to the oxygen way more, so they're way darker than the inner pages, but still, it's the yellowing, it's the reacting with oxygen, changing color, okay? Change, the paper becomes more brittle. And so those are all evidences that it's a chemical change, okay? So you definitely need to know how to do this, okay? Number eight is on part, beginning of part two, but I highly recommend, highly, highly recommend that you know the three differences between a compound and a mixture, okay? Now, if you have any other questions, feel free to email me tonight, okay? But the test is gonna be tomorrow, and you need to be at, on your computer, on your Chromebook, logged in by one o'clock, uh, let me see, yeah, one o'clock, okay? 12.55 is when class starts, the test is gonna open up at one and it will close at 145. You have no other time to take that test. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.